Hey math students, I got this tricky question from Davila on my Facebook page. And if you're a GED student, wipe your brow right now. Um, you probably won't see one of this style on the GED. So this video is not for you. But Davila already passed her GED. Yay, good for her. And she has moved on now. She's taking the T's exam to get into nursing. Good for you, Davila. Super proud of you. And so even though we do see quadratic equations on the GED, we don't usually see them in quite this style, um, but certainly, yeah, you could see it on other exams such as the T's exams, your college entrance examinations where they're trying to decide, or I should say college placement exams where they're trying to decide where to place you, and it's certainly going to come up in your college algebra class. So let's take a look. So the quadratic equation here looks really tricky. You know, not only do I see that the X is in this quantity that's being squared, that's how I know it's a quadratic, by the way, the x is being squared. Uh, but there's like this 2 trapped in there, and it just looks gross, like more complex than things we've seen before. But this one's actually a lot easier than it looks. And the reason why it's a lot easier than it looks is because it's this entire grouping that's being squared. That's actually a good thing, because that means that I could untrap my x from the square by getting rid of it. Let me show you what I mean. So the first thing I'm going to do, I work backwards when I'm solving equations, you know, so um, I'm going to leave my grouping here until last, and I'm actually going to move away my multiplier. Do you see how this 5 is shoved up against the parentheses? It's multiplying that group. And so let's get rid of that 5 by doing the opposite. Now, of course, what is the opposite of multiplying by 5? It is dividing by 5. So I'm going to take this entire left-hand side divide by 5. And you say, Kate, can I do that? And literally, remember, you can do anything you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. So I say, sure, you could do that as long as you also divide the right-hand side by 5. And let's see what cool thing is about to happen. Well, on this side, multiplying and dividing by 5 are opposites. They cancel. And so all I'm left with is that grouping, that x minus 2, being squared. And then on the right hand side, 125 divided by 5, you can do it in your calculator. But I know that there's 5 quarters in a buck 25. So I know my 25 times tables pretty well. And you'll find most of you do as well. Um, okay, so now you might think, well, what am I supposed to do now, Kate? Well, notice how that group is kind of trapped right now. That entire group is being squared. Okay, and what I need to do is untrap it. I need to get that x out of that grouping by getting rid of the square. And again, we can always get rid of things by doing the opposite. So remember that the opposite of square is square root. I am going to square root the entire left-hand side of the equation. And again, you say, can I do that, Kate? <laughs> Yes, you can do whatever you want. Welcome to having the power of the equal sign. We can do whatever we want to an equation as long as we do it to both sides. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. But here's what you need to take note of. And this is an application that doesn't show up on the GED, but it sure will on your T's and on your college algebra classes. There is a consequence of square rooting both sides. Spelling is harder than consequence. Guys, spelling is harder than math, I promise. Consequence. Con here, we'll make it kind of look like a C and kind of look like an S. Okay, so there is a consequence of square rooting both sides. And that is that you end up with this interesting looking symbol, the plus or minus sign. Some of you guys have seen this sucker before in the quadratic formula and you didn't know where it came from. This is where it came from. So on this right hand side where I wrote square root of 25, I am going to write plus or minus. Because as it turns out, when you take a square root, you can have both a positive and a negative answer. Here's why. There's actually two ways to square a number to get 25. I could square five. Five squared is 25. But I could also square negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 5 is also 25. And so I'm going to actually get two answers. So I have positive, negative 25. Okay, Whew. now let's see what happens. All right, square and square root are opposites. They cancel, and my guy, is he's just untrapped. This is x minus 2. 
And that's going to be equal to the positive or the negative of the square root of 25. And of course, 25 is a perfect square, right? 5 times 5 is 25. So I know the square root of 25, it's 5. Now I'm almost done here. X is almost alone. But what you're going to notice here is that I, I basically have two possible answers. That's what this means, that plus or minus 5. It's either true that this x minus 2 is equal to positive 5 or it's true that this x minus 2 is equal to negative 5. So a lot of students find it easier if we just break it up here and make it two equations. So let's do that. It's either true that x minus 2 is equal to positive 5 or it's true that x minus 2 is equal to negative 5. And let's solve them separately. Okay, so if I wanted to get x alone in that left equation there, I would need to move this subtract 2. So the opposite of subtract 2 is add 2. And I would be left with the equation, let's see, subtracting 2 and adding 2 cancel, so I'd get x is equal to 7. And then on the right-hand side, whoops, what I just do? Sorry, guys. Okay, and then on the right-hand side, same thing, I want to get this x alone, so I'd need to add 2 to both the left and the right-hand side of this equation, and let's see what my new equation would be. So subtracting 2 and adding 2 are opposites. My x is alone, and negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. And so this uh, equation actually has two solutions, 7 and negative 3. Now you might see those two solutions written in your multiple choice a couple different ways. They could just say something like x is equal to 7 comma negative 3 and just separate the two answers with commas, or they could use set notation. It's kind of like a bag to hold your answers in, but it looks like this curly Q bracket, and then you just list all the answers inside with commas between them and end with a curly Q bracket. Now, answer could look either one of those ways, but still, all they're saying is that there's two possible answers to this. Both 7 and negative 3 would make this equation true. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it.